Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel. Hopefully you guys are doing all right. Hopefully you guys also enjoyed my reboot of Definitive Discussion. My last episode was with Skyward Wing. We talked all about Kingdom Hearts 2, a huge deep dive into that game, why we love it. But now I'm back again with a second episode, brand new topic, brand new guest. Let me know what's up in the comment section down below of who you guys want to actually see come onto the show and what you guys want to see us talk about. But this time I got my friend Monday Matt. We've talked before on one of my other shows over on thecoalish.com, but Matt, what's good how you been i'm doing pretty good man how about yourself i'm doing i'm doing all right i'm chill I'm, I'm trying new things over here trying to trying to make things happen and stuff but today me and you are going to talk about audience interaction because this has been a hot topic of discussion as of late for a number of different reasons we had stuff in the news and stuff and obviously you have a large audience you've talked about some of these things on your youtube channel with uh you know various different pieces of news that popped up here and there but the, you know when when you hear the term audience interaction or just talking with your viewers talking with the people that are fans of your content i mean what's the first like couple things that pop into your head is like good bad what what's going on in your brain well I, it's always sh it should always be a good thing you know these these yeah. are people that take time out of their life to like literally pay attention to you and that's 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 kind of significant if you think about it yeah. you know uh it, especially if you think about it like this 450 hours worth of content is uploaded to youtube every single minute so you're you're fighting against a tsunami a constant nonstop tsunami of content. So people who pay attention, like that's so cool. It's amazing. And, and like, you know, everyone I know is super thankful, but there also comes a time. There's a dark side to that. I should say where you end up getting yourself in a situation where the, like, if you have critics or you, what well, I guess you could call them haters, the vocal minority. They, the, yeah, they, are, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, it's good, it's good, good PC way of saying right? that too. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was going to like think of a word starts with C, but anyway, um, oh. no, <laughs> no, no, but it, it's, it, it's, it's the vocal minority can become a problem yeah, because definitely. they're the ones that are, that are talking. They're the ones that you're engaging with. And it is an issue that stems uh, in any field, it doesn't matter what it is, where those people can easily overtake the good ones because those are the ones you see the most of. And that's when you have to be like, honest to God, careful, because you can tank everything by by mistaking the wrong thing, uh, as we've seen in some cases. Make, or, or make it worse, like overall, like obviously the yeah. most recent example, of this was Jessica Price, Arena Net, you know, and that whole interaction with that Twitch, I think it was a Twitch streamer that was a fan of just, I think it was Guild Wars 2 and like some of her work that he was responding to. Yeah, it, that, that whole thing was just like, well, because I, I think the best way to look at it, too, in that regard is like she. OK, so her argument was because I feel it's good. It's good to look at trying to try to look at all sides. Yeah. Her argument was essentially this is my space, right? Like not my space dot com, but just this is her space. Her, <laughs> my space, her, man, her, relic. Her, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. Nostalgia reference. Chalk went up for the nerd factor. Uh, right. but no, it's it, this is like her sp safe space, so to speak. And as a result of that, she doesn't want the interaction inside of her uh, space. And so when this guy, Doror, uh, came to her with a very valid and very reasonable rebuttal. It seemed pretty her chill. 29 it was very valid, It was very totally reasonable. chill thing. Yeah, I mean, she had like gone on this like huge ass tirade and he was just like, mm -hmm, uh, I disagree. <laughs> like in a very, very, very polite way. And then she, she could have at that moment in time, she could have just let it go. She could have just not responded. Be the bigger polite. adult. Been the, been the bigger adult or whatever, except what she chose to do was she chose to single him out directly and then attack him for it, call him sexist, essentially, and and make him out to be this thing that he clearly is not. And as a result of that, you know, people got mad. They got mad because they're seeing this 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 person who they're not viewing it from her perspective. They're not seeing it from the this is my private time, my safe space, my private space to have these conversations. It's a they're public forum. It's a public forum, and as soon as she responded, she went back on the clock, right? So she's she's on the clock in that particular regard. I, I felt uh, like she was on the clock the entire time because obviously I know a lot of people have pointed out she she's representing Arena Net, you know, talking in that what is it that long thread and stuff. My thing is is that I feel like when you're in that position, especially when you have a larger following and stuff, you kind of give up this whole safe space type of thing because I don't think Twitter and I don't think like you know public threads like that, especially on the internet, are really safe spaces. I think that you know if you're going to put an opinion out there, you have to have the ability to take the, not only the criticism but also accept that other people are going to feel different than you. Like. I think that's yeah. applicable not just to YouTubers, not just to entertainers, but just to anybody that uses that platform. Again, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitch, I would even argue. Anything that's like that, especially that when you have eyes on you for whatever it is that you're doing. No, that's very true. The big problem with it is essentially is that 
you've got to like you've got to manage your response right now. I I could see your point of saying that she's on the clock all the time. I I kind of want to disagree with that simply because I feel like anyone who does customer service. Uh, who their name is attached. She doesn't do customer service. She's like a narrative writer, right? But it's like she's talking about something that's related to, yes, her job or to her field, but she wasn't necessarily putting it out there in a way at that moment in time that was probably meant to invoke that kind of response or any kind of response, really, outside of just a pat on the back and a hug. But I think her response to the to the comment back is the problem here. Heavy and handed. that's yeah, and that's when she went back on the clock. Like when she responded, she punched back in. Had she just like ignored it, it would have been fine because people do need to have a separation, right? Like they need to have a separation between their their personal and their private or their professional and their private. You know, so it's like with me, for example, I've got my Twitter. I've got, you know, thirty one and a half thousand followers. I've got my hundred and sixty one thousand YouTube followers. And, you know, so, I mean, people know who I am and people pay attention to what I have to say. My Facebook, 487 people. That's it. I don't add anyone there that's a fan. I barely add any friends that I have on YouTube on there. And I keep it very, very, very close. Um, And that's because that's my personal space to go to. Yeah, of course. But here's the the question I have, though. and, and, And I think it's a little bit more unique to Jessica's situation, or at least that piece of news. And it's different for everybody. I feel like, you know, obviously because of her job, her profession and stuff, you know, being part of that company, obviously they have these guidelines and I'm pretty sure rules and regs for the way that they interact with not just the gaming public, but just the public in general. Because you even saw that in the response that they had later on when they were talking about why her and I think her colleague also got fired. They didn't represent the company in in a professional fashion, interacting with the Guild Wars 2 or arena net community at least that's how they kind of worded it somewhat where i can understand that logic i can understand like the separation between your job and then your personal stuff but in my personal opinion just looking at it from the outside uh if you're going out there if you're making this thread that i think was like 25 tweets or so or so so it was like a lot where she's talking about all this stuff you know putting the opinions out there putting the discussion out there i felt like uh and then you know people were having that feedback and stuff i think she should have not only expected that people were not going to like 100 percent agree with her but also i think that she should have also in that case you know besides not being heavy heavy handed with the response also understand that whatever uh whatever things that are going to come her way even if they were like outwardly negative she could have just been the bigger adult and just not responded oh no 100 percent. and and here's the thing because the the guy that what was it the the head of arena net came out and says like listen you know this type of response was like way too much she could have just not responded because he even came out and said that she could have just not responded because even no matter how you look at the stuff that she got, that guy really didn't say anything that got into any of the stuff that she was talking about. I felt like it put arena net in a weird position, but also I think it's, you know, this goes back to the old time, time old uh, was a lesson that there are consequences to your actions and your opinions and stuff. You have to be able to accept that no matter what you do, especially if you're being part of a company or at least representing a company in some way. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I, I feel like, I feel like there's something else there that we're not seeing here. Like there's more uh, to the story. Yeah, because it's like okay, so she came out like she had a history responded. of stuff though like that. that that's I'm pretty sure I'm pretty certain there was a there was a history there because it's like to to come out and it's like I think okay, I'm pretty certain that like this was not the first time she'd made a comment like this. I'm pretty sure it's the first time, not the first yeah, it's time. It's actually out there. It's actually been put out there in some places. I know oh, okay. that some YouTubers have made videos that have talked about where she's had that brazy type of like attitude or yeah. responses in the past. Yeah, and I'm pretty certain that the guy who runs Arena Net's like, yeah, I know. At this point, you're just a liability. Um, it's just gotten pretty bad, and that that part makes sense. And, but the thing is, even going after the what was the Freeze guy, Al, Phil Freeze, Alex Freeze, whatever his name yeah, is, her colleague, her colleague. I feel like I feel that was just collateral damage. Like I feel that was. I think that was one of those things where it's like, you know, there's because something. Because what he some, said wasn't all that bad. In all yeah, he, just, he defended her, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like he's a colleague; he's going to defend his friend. I get that. Should he have lost his job in the process? I don't really feel that's the case because he didn't attack anybody. Yeah, that did kind of suck. <laughs> it, you know, but it's like I think that the biggest problem with there is it comes down from a from a top down perspective, where you've got someone who is defending their colleague, and they get fired for defending him. If that's the story, because there could also be more behind the scenes we don't know of. But I think if you take a look at what Jessica Price did post being fired. And how she went to like Kotaku and Polygon. Yeah, I don't think that was places. very cool. I think that was wrong. And, yeah, she threw everyone there under the bus. That said it was a, a very like toxic environment or anything or whatever it was. And all of these things she was saying, 
uh, as a way to make you know herself more of the victim and more of like I did nothing wrong, even though never once realizing or having ever having that moment of self reflection of going like maybe I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> You know, because at any point in time, uh, any any change in that particular, um, you know, direction of where things are going would have probably been a little bit better. I so I don't really feel bad she was fired, uh, especially after she left and how she tried burning everything down on her way out. Like you're not going to get a, you know, like you might get a job somewhere else, but you know, she lives here in Washington, and because I'm in Washington, and uh, it ain't cheap here. Right, just just give you just to give your listeners a little little bit of uh, housing information, to give you an idea of like, what it's like, <laughs> what is what it's like to live. I think up in that general area, in in downtown Seattle, if you want to have a two bedroom apartment, you need a a, a medium income of one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars a year. That is not cheap, son. Oh <laughs> no, off. it's not cheap. It's not cheap. So it's like she just lost her job, and she was fired, uh, and and it was pretty unceremonious, and there was a lot of a lot of public baggage. And if she goes to the the unemployment office and they deny her claim, like because it goes back to the company, if they deny her claim and they take it to a hearing, all they have to do is walk in there and just go, here is all of these things she did after the fact. Uh, and they probably would be like, yeah, you don't deserve unemployment for it. So you know something? I want to kind of bring it back, though, to a little thing that I think is a great segue into another aspect of all this, you know, for, when it comes to audience interaction, you know, because that's just one thing. That's like someone that's part of a company that's interacting with the public, you know, somewhat of a public figure. But then you mentioned also earlier, obviously, your audience with YouTube. And then there's a lot of other YouTubers that have massively huge audiences. And obviously, every once in a while, they'll do something or interact with somebody that will show up on Drama Alert. Like, it's just one of those things where there's a lot of different levels levels and kind of nuances to this idea of like having some sort of relationship or some sort of interaction with your viewers, your audience and stuff. Do you feel like it's a little bit more tougher or at least the consequences, good or bad, what for YouTubers or people that are content creators that are not really associated with a, a company or an entity like that? Because obviously you're your own boss in that regard. You're you're kind of responsible for what you do, you know, all on you at that point. What you put in is what you get out of it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So it's like if any you know if anyone's gonna kill my kill kill my business it's gonna be me right like you know there, there's other people like we've seen in the news and stuff that have kind of you know done cer certain things here and there that you know have changed perception or have had consequences with people like becoming more fans or less fans of like stuff they do again there's you could go down a list of all different types of people in the games industry you could go to entertainers actors people that are in all sorts of like entertainment mediums that are like that but again it's all really on them but they're not necessarily associated with an entity so they could have a different approach to how to interact with their audience yeah, I, I I'm, I, I got kind of like uh, kind of lost in that, <laughs> that particular. Uh, can you re can you reframe that question? So, so let uh, me let me put it this way, at least you know to to kind of restructure it. You know, okay. is is the interaction or the way that one approaches interacting with the audience different when you're someone that's like a creator or someone that's not tied to a company? Like that. So as opposed to like what happened with Jessica Price, where she was more heavy handed in the way that she reacted to some of the stuff that happened and what she did afterwards. When you looked at someone that's like a YouTuber that that feels like they maybe have a lot more leeway and a lot more kind of like breathing room to kind of do more stuff. Is it a little bit much more tougher or are the consequences good or bad a little bit much more impactful? Um, in some respects, yes. In other respects, no. Essentially, how it boils down is this. Um, if I have a sponsor and I say something that somebody doesn't like, they can go after my sponsor. So while they may not get me fired, they might end up taking away that source of income if that sponsor caves. Yeah. And in many cases, the sponsor does in fact cave because they don't want to deal with the BS. It's not worth their time. So yeah, they have that. Are they going to be able to completely like, you know, take you down? Likelihood of it happening is no. I mean, we've seen some pretty abhorrent stuff happen with content creators over the years that by if they were in any other field, they would just be demolished. But in some cases, right. they grow. I mean, look at like Logan Paul in the Suicide that, He's like video. an anomaly, like straight up. Like, he, he, besides yeah, that, that would have an anomaly. That would have killed anyone else's channel, any anyone else's career. That would have killed. Um, but uh, somehow he's thriving. You know, somehow he's uh, and he's like disrespectful he, to his audience. Like he's one of those few creators that I've seen, you know, on YouTube and other platforms that like are almost actively hostile to the audience besides the ones that buy their merch and stuff. I just never was really down with it. And I'm always confused as to why people think that's OK. They 
you know, I, I think some people just like the abuse, to be honest with you. I, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it boils down to this. Especially, okay, if you look at, let's say, Logan Paul. I'll use him just as an example. Yeah. Logan Paul is the kind of person who vlogs his life. That means good, bad, ugly, funny, terrible stuff. He'll, he'll vlog it. So then he's meant to put out this, this idea that he is, you know, he exudes emotion. That this is his life as it is, not as it was, you know, not, not if it's framed or, or skewed a certain way. Right. Like I'm personally under the belief that the whole suicide forest video is fake. Uh, and I have very good reason to believe that, you know, but the thing is, is that it doesn't matter because in the general consciousness of everything, he's already made that mistake. So hmm. I feel with Logan Paul, like he can kind of do whatever he wants uh, because his life is drama. And the more drama he creates, the, the more people are going to flock to him. Now, you mentioned before, obviously, about sponsors and stuff, but let, what about Patreon? Where Patreon, it's more the funny that comes directly from the audience, direct from the people that are supporting or like just fans of your stuff. I mean, do you find that to be somewhere, you know, along the lines of like, again, maybe a little bit much more impactful which, uh, than sponsors, you know, as far as like whether there's a, a positive or negative reaction from the creator to the audience and such? Because again, it's the directly from the audience and depending on what they do, that'll immediately affect like their perception of that, that person. You know, it really depends on on whether or not they're able to actually take down someone's Patreon. It doesn't happen very often. Patreon tends to look the other way in a lot of issues. I'm not, and I'm not saying like anything specific. But well, but I mean, more like people stop stopping their pledges. Is what I mean, like not necessarily Patreon yeah, and I, taking them down. Okay, I haven't really seen many si situations where people have like lost a lot. A Patreon ebbs and flows, right? It ebbs and flows. So you know, I haven't seen any specific instance. Where people have 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 just completely, you know, um, run yeah, run from a Patreon. And I've seen specific incidences where people have flocked to a Patreon. So course, and that yeah. usually, and I've seen I see that a lot more than I see people leaving, um, because oftentimes people don't you know they don't make a big stink about uh un, un, un you know pledging some money to somebody you know they'll they'll make a big stink for like oh i i pledged money here or i subscribed or i liked or whatever um but they don't really talk much about them leaving so that's why i haven't seen it so i think i think patreon is a different beast in, entirely so here's another thing because i just thought of this now like so not too long ago i had a conversation with jesse cox and we were talking a little bit about audience interaction like at least from his perspective having a ridiculously huge audience and like the type of stuff and the relationship he tries to have with them one of the things that he said was that guys like pewdiepie kind of messed it up for everybody because they changed the dynamic of it it's no longer where you're just looking at them as an entertainer they kind of present themselves or at least the creator presents themselves to the audience as like their friend as their bestie as their boy their homie and stuff do you think that has kind of really kind of change things up for better or worse right now so again when you have those reactions whether it's positive or negative that like it's one extreme or the other well in the case of pewdiepie i mean okay so here, here's how you have to look at this right pewdiepie's general audience are younger people yeah. right they're they're younger individuals and and they're these kids. are people that they're kids but and the thing is kids watch a lot of stuff online and so the same thing with logan paul is they find connections with these with these content creators. I've gotten emails from people uh, that have been suicidal that have told me that watching my videos or knowing that every day a new video comes out uh, has actually really helped them mentally. It's something they can count on in their life that's when real. they couldn't count on much else. And that's like that's a really heavy thing to be told. Definitely. Right. That's a super heavy thing to be told. And so it does happen. People people make these connections. I mean, look at celebrities, right? Celebrities, you you get like, you know, uh, let's just say Tom Cruise first thing came to mind, right? Yeah. Some people out there hundred percent love Tom Cruise. They got Tom Cruise plastered on their walls. They've never met him. They've never interacted with him, he, but they still love him anyway, right? What would happen? What would happen if a mega Tom Cruise fan all of a sudden had the ability to interact with Tom Cruise, like where he would maybe answer a question in a live stream or respond to a tweet or a Facebook post or heart one of their comments or like one of their comments. I mean, this is going to change the game because now it takes it from this interpersonal relationship to essentially a personal relationship, although with boundaries, right? Yeah. And so you, you've got that. You got to look at that. There, there are people out there that, you know, I know for a fact have had stalkers, you know, content creators. Uh, there are people out there that, you know, I know of that have had dead birds sent to their house. Oh, you know, I, I mean, like I, I, someone swatted me two years ago I remember and that. there's no, no other way to describe that than somebody sending the cops to my house to kill me. 
and and all over and i don't even really know why it happened so it's kind of like there's there's a number of factors that go into it here but then you meet someone i met someone a few months ago at an event in phoenix uh where i walk i this woman was there she turned around she saw me she literally started shaking and crying because she's a huge fan you That's know and it, and we talked for a while, talked to YouTube, and then about an hour later, I get a I get a DM on Facebook from her husband. Right, like she told her husband she met me, so he messages me, and he was just like, you know, hey, my wife says she met you. She says you're really cuddly in person. I must now go commit like suicide or something like that, right? What? And it was like, and I, it was what? it was meant to be. It was meant to be like uh, this, like really kind of playful thing. And I, I didn't respond to it because I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I was at the time I was really drunk, but I'm like, okay, you know. So I showed it to her the next day because she was still at this event I was at, and we kind of laughed about it. But again, there's like this these interactions. I've met people that you know when when they meet me are like they they know everything about me. They know they know my daughter's name. They know what she looks like because I I've talked about it. They know where I used to work. They know what I like. Um, the very first fan meetup, I, not fan meetup, but the very first meetup I went to uh, after being doxxed a couple of years ago, I was presented with a mundane mat pillow someone had made. Oh, and cute. it's, I still have it. I still love that thing. So let me right? ask so you like, this though. I think this is important that we need to acknowledge. It did a lot of that stuff or does a lot of that stuff happen with content creators or again, people that end up becoming public figures and stuff. Does that come from them first, you know, at first glance for a lot of people presenting themselves as like their friend, as opposed to just being the entertainer that just people just look up to because with a lot of celebrities and stars are like in Hollywood or in the music industry, there's never like, you're not, they're not really presented uh, to the people as like their friend. They're presented as a brand and that's usually where where people become obsessed with that. They become obsessed with the brand. With YouTube, and what Jesse Cox was telling me back then is what PewDiePie did is like he presented himself as their friend. Do you think now, because of that, that a lot of that stuff of what you mentioned, there's a lot more of those extremes because of that first presentation being as like, you know, human being as your friend as opposed to just a brand? I, I think that it's such a hard, it's such a hard line to walk Definitely. because we are, yeah, we are brands and that is, you know, because here's the thing: you have to understand this. Two two years ago, we couldn't have this conversation publicly true, about true. money, right? Like you couldn't. Then the apocalypse happened a year and a half ago, and it kind of turned everything on its ear. FCC came and, in. <laughs> the FCC, the, the yeah, I think it was the uh, the FTC. I think. Came okay, in. yeah, but one of those entities uh, came in and was like, "Okay, we got to set rules here." Well, and the thing is, the rules are already there. We have to now enforce them. Yeah. Uh, and the th that's that's a big part of it. But uh, but yeah, I mean, people out there like, you know, like they come into this game and, you know, you, you watch people like, let's say PewDiePie. PewDiePie plays video games for a living, right? And now, well, now he just does meme compilations, which are funny. But, you know, at his height, he was making 12 million a year. And that time he was just playing video games. Yeah. Right. He was just playing video games, making $12 million a year. So what does that tell you? What does that tell the average person out there? Oh, I can do that. I can go and do that. And so it kind of like it, it creates this weird kind of world where people think like, you know, I, the thing is, I just want to point out, I think anyone could do this job. Like, I think if you have enough passion, you could do this job. It, it's just, the metal a lot, to it, stick into it. I think that's what it you is. Got, yeah. And you got to really stick through it. Um, but, you know, people eventually become brands because they want to start being paid. And when that happens, you know, you got you got to brand yourself. It's got to be merchandising. You got to have a logo. You got to have a catchphrase. You know, I mean, like. PewDiePie didn't ruin it for people. And, you know, the thing with Jesse Cox is I, I did want to kind of touch upon that one. You know, J that's Jesse during the whole CoxCon uh, traps are gay thing was blocking people en masse on Twitter. He blocked me for making a crack about it and only unblocked me after Total Biscuit died. So, you know, like he's gone through that whole thing, too, of where it's in. And, and I'm, I'm using this as an example of a person who just kind of hits the end of the rope in terms of audience interaction. Hmm. because if you say the wrong thing you ha and you have a notable audience people will remind you of this jessica price people knew who she was because people bigger than her were talking about her and now this this tidal wave this avalanche crashes at her doorstep and instead of either walking away from it and saying like you know like i'm just not dealing with this anymore or coming out and saying like look i was wrong in my actions which she clearly was uh, then it's just going to keep going. That's the way that this stuff works because it builds and it compounds. So let me ask you this then. I think this is a good way to, uh, to kind of meet up with the conclusion here. Uh, how does one find the good balance with that? Like how does one actually, again, you know, try to keep the audience happy, try to have great positive interaction stuff, but also at the same time be real and speak up when one has to speak up. I mean, I don't think it takes a lot of energy to kind of like tell like how it is in some cases or be truthful or be real, quote unquote. 
like that. But at the same time, you know, still have that trust, still have that type of relationship with your audience or with the audience, I should say. I'm sorry, there's a bit of a technical error on my end. Can you please oh, repeat that? Okay, yeah. Time? Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. What I was yeah, saying yeah. was, what I was saying was, is like, how does one find that balance? How does one find the balance between being real and actually still maintaining a good, positive relationship or some sort of strong relationship with the audience? You know, whether it's, you know, from becoming too much of a brand, becoming too uh, inauthentic, but still also being able to be genuine with yourself or at least be genuine about yourself with the audience and allow them to still have a strong relationship with you. Where's that balance? How does one find that? To be honest with you, man, I've been doing this six years and I can't fully tell you that answer because <laughs> it always, it always shifts. Cause here's, okay, look, but I'll be, I'll be honest though. It's like, this yeah. is where I'm kind of at right now. So, uh, I got, I guess you could say my start, I got big off of Gamergate, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, that really rocketed me up in regards to this controversy, brought a lot of new subscribers, a lot of new people. So many were coming in that it was this, this, this real large rise super quick. And I didn't cultivate the audience. I didn't cultivate the people that were coming in. And as a result, I'm actually at odds with a number of people who originally were subscribed to me during that because we, we you know, our values differ in very fundamental ways. Yeah. And so the, and then as a course of like the growth process, a lot of, you know, I will fully admit I got hooked on the hundred thousand sub mark. I wanted that plaque, you know, I wanted that silver play button. Uh, and then when I got it, I freaking cried like crazy. That's what you we're know? talking about. Get those uh, accolades. Get those trophies. <laughs> Got to do it. Got to do it. There's also a video of me crying. And you can look, oh, look real? Oh, we'll cut that no, up tonight. <laughs> I looked it up. No, seriously. Seriously. Yeah, you can look it up. It's fine. Uh, I put it out there. I put it out there, though, for a reason. I put that out there because that was a very, very significant and proud moment of my not only my career, but my life. And something I a, a, a trophy, I guess you could say that I had I had worked for. Um, but even now I, you know, at the 160,000 sub mark and the videos a day, I, I find that I don't quite know my audience as well in some respects as I'd like to. And that's so hard when you're trying to build and cultivate an audience and still run the business and still do everything on social media because people aren't all going to come to you in the same, the same manner. They're not all going to come in through YouTube comments or tweets or Facebook messages. Sometimes there's emails. Sometimes it's whole other videos people make about you that you have, you don't know about. Right. Like, you know, they, they make these either like these commentary videos response or whatever. And you have no freaking idea because they never tell you. You just never find out. So it's so difficult to like cultivate everything. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think live streaming, though, is is really good right now, because live streaming, it allows people that that moment of interaction. People can come on in and they can they can just listen and then they can comment. And then there's interaction with them. Like I like to do people calling into the show uh, and then give conversations that Kinda way. Like NPR. Almost. Uh, well, yeah, more like just kind of like a, you know, it's nowhere near as 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 classy. Slash, as no, stylish. <laughs> it's, no, yeah, I wish I would. I wish I could. I wish I could do that fresh air. You know, they have really good sounding <laughs> microphones. Um, and but it's like that. It's like you got to sit there and talk to them. You got to sit there and, uh, and 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 figure it out. And the thing is, it, that gets away from so many people when you get to a certain number because it just becomes so many people to try tougher. to remember. And it's never like people are trying to, you know, ever, ever say kind of F you to their fans or whatever. But, you know, eventually like it boils down to the, like, look, we're going to, you know, the, the creator will do this one thing and that is how you can reach them. And, and that, because that's the easiest for them to manage everybody. And that's where it's going to be at. So it's, it's with any look, you can, you can find a way to meet in the middle, uh, and, and interact. But the best thing is, is, you know, if my advice to content creators would be, um, don't get mad on social media. Uh, <laughs> Use it, it good might, judgment. <laughs> it might feel good. You'd be amazed at how many times, um, at how many times I have I have tweeted some, I have typed up a tweet in response to somebody saying some really inane stuff that just brutally decimates them, and then I just delete it. I'm like, it's just not worth it. That, that's it, being a bigger adult. It's not worth it. I mean, like, it just just even before recording this, uh, I made a comment about the uh, the new Shira uh, oh, animation. I heard about this, yeah. It looks terrible. It's terrible, right? And this one woman basically gets called, you know, starts calling me out and implies I have a, I have small genitalia because I don't, I, because I don't enjoy the animation style. Like, you know, it, How does it's, one even get to that? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, but that's worth that though. So it's like, so it, it's, it's like, how do you respond to that? You know, like I could sit there and go, like I could sit there and go find photos of her and critique her, phys her physical, uh, you know, appearance. That wouldn't be cool though. That wouldn't be cool. <laughs> That wouldn't be cool. So the, the so the key is you just get you know you either don't respond, which I didn't. I did respond, but I respond by saying so. I'm not allowed to have an opinion about the way this looks, and you just have to rely on ad hominem attacks. Like that's all you got, you know. And that's all she has. 
and it just kind of deflates the situation. But then it's also like the big problem with that, though, is then I draw attention to that and my audience. Then, you know, some people go and they start kind of responding back to her and she could look at that as being some form of harassment, uh, which if I, I don't know if she will or won't. But the idea there is it's so hard to find that balance because you you want to like you want to respond to people. Yeah. But it gets to a point of where it's like if you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good thing. I think it comes down to three things. I think it comes down to metal. I think it comes down to patience and also just be using good judgment. You know, just in general. It's not just larger creators. I think it's just all types of creators, you know, as you start to build an audience like that, which I think is very true. Again, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But if you, at least you have a good decision or at least a good head on your head, I mean, a good head on your shoulders, I screwed that up. Head on your shoulders in order to make a good decision in order to make things work and stuff. But either way, Matt, Thank you for coming on to the show on this definitive discussion rebooted. I appreciate it. It's always good chatting it up with you and stuff. Where can everybody find you right now? Where, where are you at? Google mundane mad. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't do that. You might find some really horrible stuff. Oh God. YouTube, YouTube.com for slash mundane. Mad. <laughs> but uh, Monday mad on YouTube. You're also on Twitter, correct? Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Uh, any social media platform, I'm pretty much there. Under all me. mundane math. That's what I'm talking about. That's good. But <laughs> all mundane math all the time. That's, that's right. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Right. 24-7 mundane math is all good. But, but what are you up to lately? You're doing more videos. You're doing more content on YouTube. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I do three videos a day um, for the most part. And then I'm looking into doing more live streaming. Uh, I want to I want to start covering more of the really salacious out there news. Like that's some of the stuff that like would just get you totally demonetized on YouTube, but it's more fun to talk about because uh, there is a lot of crazy in this world. And yeah. at this point now, I'm just trying to figure out a, a damn name. That's crazy. And before, man. before I launch. That's cool, man. Hopefully it comes out good and hopefully it ends up working out good. But again, thank you, Matt, for joining me on the show. Guys, if you're listening to this now, let me know what's up down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, of course. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for all my videos like this new Definitive Discussion series, as well as my game reviews that I post up every single week. I got a ton of content I've been trying to bring to you guys. Let me know what's up. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. And again, like I said earlier before, in the comments, let me know who you guys want to see on the show. Let me know who you guys want to hear from and what types of topics you guys want us to talk about. But either way, we will talk to you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. <laughs>